Hello there everyone, it's Drew here, your neighborhood-friendly Banjo-Kazooie fanatic. So, it's been a bit of a spell since my last upload, because I really wanted to take the time to talk a lot about what I think is a really historical moment for the Banjo-Kazooie series, and that is the duo's first adventure being released on the Nintendo Switch online service. Now, the reason I call this historical is because, although the game has been available for over a decade in Xbox consoles with a number of great enhancements, the original Nintendo 64 version of the game has actually been unreleased since its original cartridge run in 1998. This is mainly because of the Microsoft purchase of Rare in 2002, and when Rare created a new version of the game for Xbox Live Arcade in 2008, they had to remove almost all references to Nintendo from the game, such as the walking N64 logo and the Nintendo xylophone. Now, however, with the necessary deals being struck and Banjo-Kazooie once again appearing on the Nintendo console, we are once again able to play the original version with all the Nintendo artifacts intact. It felt great to boot the game up on Switch and see that wobbly N walk across the screen once more. For this playthrough, I really wanted to take the time to just enjoy it as a gamer. No streaming, no let's plays, just a 34-year-old Banjo-Kazooie fan playing his favorite game for the upteenth time. This game means a lot to me, and I went into this hoping this version wouldn't be riddled with some of the glitches we saw of games like Paper Mario on the NSO, where you could lose your entire save file. It appears that Nintendo is taking the time to fix some of these issues, like improving the appearance of the Dark Link room in Ocarina of Time, and improving input latency. I am also happy to report that I didn't experience any emulation or glitching issues from my time playing a 100% run of Banjo-Kazooie. Especially with these patches of previous releases, what this says to me is that Nintendo is at least trying to make this a better service, and one more worth the controversial price tag of $50 a year. We are really at the bare starting point of all this, and although I was lucky to become part of a friend's family plan and still find the individual price a little high, I think things could look very different for the service a few years from now, especially if everything currently offered at that point just transfers over to the next Nintendo console. Adding more games and perks to the service will help increase the value, and I believe that Banjo-Kazooie is a really big step in that direction, which I'll be explaining more in detail. I'm going to start right off the bat by saying that the NSO release of the game is in some respects even better than the Xbox One. Now before you start writing in the comments about all the many ways Xbox is better, I won't argue with those points. XBLA still has a better widescreen presentation, a note system much more forgiving to new players, updated made for Xbox controls, and a fully functional stop and swap system that ties into Banjo-Tooie on Xbox. It is a truly fantastic way to play the game for Xbox owners that was tailor-made for that system. That being said, there are a few things the Switch version does better. For one thing, the game's memorable prologue music is significantly out of sync on Xbox, but is much more in line on Switch. You also really can't replace the nostalgic value of those old Nintendo artifacts. The walking N64 logo is some of the best, most creative animation in the game, and restoring the Nintendo-iness of Banjo-Kazooie really feels like a trip down memory lane. There is also the matter of Banjo-Kazooie's note collection system, which is significantly more challenging in the first version of the game. Every level has 100 notes scattered across the world that you need to collect to open the note doors in Gruntilda's lair. Rather than just keeping a music note permanently like was done later in the Xbox version, the game instead scores how many notes you collect on a single run on a level. If you either die or exit the level without collecting all 100 notes, the notes will reset, and you will start again to try and get more than last time. During this playthrough of the game, after getting about half the notes in Treasure Trove Cove, I got a little reckless in trying to jump off the top and met my untimely demise. I ended up having to redo a few parts of the level, including the Nipper fight to catch back up to where I was. What really stuck out to me playing this time is that the old note score system really forces you to memorize the levels through trial and error and figure out the best route to collect all the jiggies and notes. 
That is why everyone advises to do the engine room first in Rusty Bucket Bay, as it is the most difficult section of the level. There are fewer things worse than getting nearly every single note to lose it all from an unexpected challenge, and I think that harsh remnant of retro gaming is actually still a lot of fun, as it forces you to be careful and figure out the best plan for success. That's not to say that the note system is going to sit well with all gamers, especially ones brand new to Banjo-Kazooie. Thankfully, with the use of save states available for NSO, the harshness of losing all your notes can be prevented, but those who still want the challenge could still just tackle it the old-fashioned way. So, in my view, playing the game on Switch provides the perfect compromise between those who want that extra challenge or those who might need a little help along the way. Moving on to another topic, while Banjo-Kazooie on NSO is again just a straight ROM port of the N64 release, there are some significant visual upgrades that I very much appreciated. Most importantly, the game runs at a consistent 30 FPS in almost all areas, which is definitely noticeable in certain sections of the game, such as Clanker's Cavern or Grunty's Furnace Fun. The game's stretchy, bouncy, almost Disney-like animation really gets a chance to shine. The only part of the game where I noticed occasional dips was the fall section of Click Clock Woods, and in the overworld outside of Gobi's Desert, which really wasn't a downgrade from what I was already used to there. The HD resolution also adds an extra shine to the character models, and to the environments which are still very well textured to this day. Overall, while not as pretty as Xbox, the fact that it's still better than the N64 is definitely a plus in my view. One aspect of playing the game on Switch that took me a little while to figure out was the control scheme. I spent most of my time playing the game in docked mode with the Switch Pro Controller, with a few other sessions in handheld mode. I've been kinda slapping myself in the face for not getting the new N64 controller when it was first released, and it has been pretty much missing in action since. The game has a somewhat complicated control scheme for a platformer, and not having easy access to those 4C buttons did make it a little challenging to figure out a good button mapping, which I ended up having to spend a good chunk of time with. Overall though, once I did figure out something that worked, I found the game handled very well with the Pro Controller. Playing the game in handheld mode is also very fun, although the control stick is a little more sensitive than I prefer for more challenging platforming sections. If any of you have played this with the N64 controller, I'd appreciate your feedback in the comment section down below. I could talk about this game forever really, but to wrap things up, Banjo-Kazooie is an amazing addition to the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack, and one I'll definitely be playing on Switch for years to come. While it is not the same custom-made package as the Xbox release, the fact we do have an official way to play the original N64 version is still a great reason to celebrate. Banjo-Kazooie has had a bit of a homecoming these last few years, starting with their triumphant return in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and now the first game once again being on a Nintendo platform. I hope that millions of Switch owners will have the opportunity to play this incredible game for the first time, and that this newfound momentum and interest in the series finally results in a new game. Until next time, this is Drew, the Nostalgia Maniac, signing out.